Pelosi squaring off with a member of the squad. Their face-to-face -face follows weeks of friction between the House Speaker and a crew of freshman Democratic lawmakers. Want to bring in our A-team, David Asman, anchor of Bulls and Bears. Hello, David. Good to see you. Liza Collins, did I get it right? That's it. Wall Street <laughs> Journal politics reporter, welcome back to you, Eliza. Thank you. And Judith Miller, adjunct fellow, Manhattan Institute Policy Research. Hello to the Hello. three of you. Great panel Hello. here. Yes. Really good. Looking good, too. <laughs> uh, what, what, what does Nancy Pelosi say this hour about how the meeting went? Well, it's going to be very important what she says because, uh, of course, we know that Republicans want to link AOC and the squad with Nancy Pelosi. That's what President Trump was, I believe, trying to do when he said his statements and a lot people thought were outrageous, but at the same time kind of connected when they were, remember when uh, AOC and others suggested that Nancy Pelosi had a problem with women of color, uh, it seemed like Donald Trump was trying to bring him back. And if they are brought back, if AOC and Pelosi are linked together going into the election, Donald Trump can pretty accurately say that the Democrats have never been further to the left than they are now. Liza. So ahead of the meeting, Pelosi basically said, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, but I meet with lots of people. I expect her to continue to do something like that. She's being a little bit dismissive without completely saying this member doesn't matter, but she's not going to acknowledge or try to acknowledge as little as possible actually the fighting, the infighting. She'll say, I met with one of my members. It was a positive meeting. We're all on the same page. I don't expect her so to go into So what does AOC detail. say to that then? Right. She, she does not hold her fire. <laughs> yes, she... she she has not held her fire, but I think walking out, we'll see probably a similar message from AOC. Pelosi is very good in those meetings. I've talked to so many people about how she just sort of wears members down, really puts pressure on them. I think AOC will walk out and say, we may disagree on a few things, but we're united. I imagine they will walk out at least saying that they're united even after. Uh, just just to steer your, steer your quote, USA Today, I have a steady stream of members coming through my office, and I'll look forward to her visit as well, end quote. Judith, where are we on this? Look, it, it's peace is broken out. Both women are going to say thank you, Donald Trump, very much for bringing the Democratic Party together and for making this meeting possible and necessary because Pelosi knows that AOC, whatever her boldness at times is the energy. She represents the energy, if not the center of the party, and therefore she has to keep her in line. That's what this meeting is about. This is about AOC kissing the ring. But it's also, <laughs> it's also very much about what the Democrat Party represents going into 2020. And, and again, a lot of people are worried, a lot of people in the middle, not the, the left of the Democratic Party, but a lot of independents and folks in the middle of the Democrat Party are worried that it's going too far. To left. Even Gillibrand right now, who was a moderate when she was here in New York, uh, is now putting forth a $10 trillion green plan of her own. $10 trillion, she admitted it. So, I mean, the party is going far to the left, and I think the president is right. The, fr the more the public sees it as that, I think the better his chances are in the election. And we do have a Fox News poll on what Democrat voters believe of AOC and Pelosi. You can take a look. Nancy Pelosi favorable 65 percent, AOC 58 percent. Nancy Pelosi does beat her as well on unfavorable as well. Eliza, I'll go to you. How much does this matter? Because they're really not that far apart. We're not talking about double-digit differences between these two. Right. I mean, they both, I think it's fair to say they are two faces of the party, and I think that's the problem Democrats are faced with right now. We're seeing this with the conversation on impeachment. Um, Pelosi is really trying to steer Democrats clear of impeachment because she knows there are a whole bunch of Democrats that need to keep their seats and they represent red or purple districts. So Pelosi is trying to sort of make those moderates happy, but she also knows that Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez is popular, so she can't sort of completely Not push easy. that group away. Not an easy Why job. Judith, you, you said thank Donald Trump for bringing the Democratic Party right. together. Absolutely. I, I, don't, I, I can't recall a time when the Democratic Party has been so split. Oh, I and, can. And, and if, you, if, you, if you think one 30-minute meeting is going to solve all this, I would no. suggest no. Of course it's not. But what she has to do, what Pelosi has to do, is let young millennials, she has to let the people of color in her party know that this is a big tent, that AOC is part of this party without letting four junior congresswomen dominate the party. And I think Nancy Pelosi is perfectly capable of doing that. Oof, okay. I don't know. It's well, stand by. Note. She's coming up this hour, so we'll play it for <laughs> yes. viewers when it happens live. In the meantime, here is Donald Trump Jr. 
with Tucker last night reflecting on his conclusion from the Mueller matter. Watch. I think the American people finally saw it, that this man, who was the lead of the, major, the largest investigation in American history, really the largest hoax at this point, he didn't have a fundamental understanding of not only where it began, but what was even involved, how it took place. You just take the point that he is making there, because Republicans have a new line now. It's that Bob Mueller was not in charge, and he wasn't running the investigation, and he could not cite his rationale for the report live before the American people on Wednesday. This is, this is going to go for some time now. And then you have the president last night saying, investigate the investigators, which I would dare suggest about a year from now, give or take, that's where the story will be. What was the FBI doing during this campaign and preceding it? Go. So that's actually not a new line from Republicans. Obviously, this was the first time they saw Mueller really have to defend his work, and so they can point to specific statements he said. But Republicans all along have been looking at investigate the investigators. Where did this start? But looking at the testimony and both sides came out with something that they can hold on to, right? Republicans say he wasn't able to answer questions clearly. Um, he doesn't know how it started. Democrats are saying he said the president obstructed justice and they're pointing to parts of the report. So I think depending on where you fall on this, there was something in that Mueller testimony that people can grab. David, but I think Donald Trump Jr. got it. The, the big reveal uh, with the Mueller testimony was that he wasn't running the show. That the, to, to quote President President Trump, it was the 19 angry Democrats. They were the ones that were really, it should have been called the Weissman Report, not the Mueller Report, because Andrew Weissman had a lot more to do. Andrew Weissman, a big Hillary fan. He was at Hillary's uh, uh, political funeral, if you will, on the night of the election. Uh, I mean, he was the one that was really running this. And, it, you know, they, they weren't interested. The, the key here is, is they weren't really interested in any collusion between the Hillary campaign and the Russians, which we know now there was at least as much evidence, if not more so for that, than there was for Trump-Russia collusion. Uh, that's what, as you suggested, we are going to be hearing more about yeah. as the AG's and investigation just add continues. To, to what Junior's, Trump Jr.'s point was, and this has been going on in Washington for, for a while now, and that was that Bob Mueller had lost his fastball. And this is the reason why these hearings have been delayed for so long, and it took so long to get there. And there is evidence this week, Judith, that that, that was the case for him. Well, uh, there's no doubt that we saw an aging Bob Mueller. We saw someone who was not at the top of his game. I still think he had a kind of, if you will, a kind of Biden first debate problem, which is you really saw that this, the time has passed. But I think we have to distinguish between the style of the delivery and the substance and what he said. What he said was, I believe, devastating to the president. The and it's going to be a real problem, problem yeah. for the president. It, this was no witch hunt. The president was not exonerated. He lied. He All right, tell, tell that to Jim sort. Hines, Democrat from Connecticut. Quite frankly, I think it was both the Democrats and the media that sort of created this narrative that there was going to be some bombshell from Bob Mueller. There's going to be a bombshell from his deputies. There's not going to be a bombshell from him. Another Democrat said, I'd put it at a three or four out of ten yeah. with the level of effect. Well, and you, this week. you know, it was a bad day for Democrats when the president re retweets Michael Moore <laughs> tweeting about what a, what yeah, a, that tells you a dud it was. But there was a bombshell, and the bombshell was he didn't know what Fusion GPS was. He seemed completely, again, it might be because, you know, the, the pressure of the moment and, and he was slipping. But the fact is, is that Fusion GPS's role with regard to Russia and the Hillary campaign uh, indicated, I think, far more evidence of Russian collusion on the Democrat side than there ever was on the Republican side. David, 3% of Americans, registered Americans, read the Mueller report, so most Americans don't know <laughs> what, what that organization I, I, is. Yeah, but he was responsible for the Mueller report. It has his name it on it. If he doesn't matter. know what Fusion GPS, his purview was investigating Russian interference with the U.S. election, correct? And that and was if, you, if that was your purview, should you not know what Fusion GPS he said was? It was an organization that was no. hired by the Hillary campaign and that had Russian influence all through. No, the future debate is going to be we had sweeping, systemic intrusion in our election. What are the Republicans doing sides. about it? On what both sides. The, what did the Democrats do about it when it was actually happening? Mitch McConnell.
McConnell has blocked the legislation from the House that would strengthen our voting system. That's going to be a Republican. You can agree to investigate Russia, and you can also agree to investigate our own government as to what they were doing yes. too. Right. Alicia, back. And Both we happen. also actually need to move on because AOC had something else to say about Puerto Rico. Oh, Let's take a listen. I am so incredibly proud of everyone in Puerto Rico. They were so relentlessly creative in um, in their protest. This is really just the beginning of a decolonization process, a process of self-determination where the people of Puerto Rico begin to start taking their own self-governance. So what about this idea of decolonization? Eliza, I'll start with you. Well, I think this is something that you see in the minority of either party. I mean, Democrats are calling for statehood for Puerto Rico. There's polling that shows the majority of Americans support statehood, but I think what's AOC Puerto Rico think, want? That's right. the question. That's right. That's right. That's right. If it's a democracy, I mean, I, look, I covered the region for 12 years. There have been many, many votes in Puerto Rico on their status. Leave it to the Puerto Ricans. This is, by the way, this is this is pure leftist poli sci 101. What she, you you hear it in most of the universities. I'm sure Boston University, where she went, uh, she heard this from her professors. But leave it up to the people of Puerto Rico to decide what they want. Judith. Yeah, but there is this kind of weird status for Puerto Rico, and, and that has to be resolved. I think that's what she was saying. I wouldn't have used that word, but this is what she was saying. And as usual, she points to a, a problem. Now, we may disagree about the solutions, but I'm with you, David. I think the Puerto Ricans really need to solve this. Democracy is a good thing. You guys have an awesome <laughs> weekend. Thank you, David. Thank, thank you, Eliza. Thank, thank, so thank, thank you, Judith. Thank nice you. to see you all.